Okay, in this video we're going to introduce the concept of databases and database management systems and we're going to discuss a, a common scenario in which uh, databases um, become uh, needed in a, in a average business type scenario. All right, so let's say I'm a small business owner and I have a few clients. So right now I just started my business and I have this folder on my desktop desktop called data right and I've been keeping track of my my customers with this txt file right and I can open this up uh, with a text editor and I've just been adding items to it here and there right so we've got these customer names getting a phone number and an email address but I'm not the only one adding to this list I have uh, other people other employees and so you know this initial number is an ID to identify my uh, this particular client um, and, and sometimes when people enter in data they label it and sometimes they don't sometimes uh, the name is all on one line sometimes first and then second or last name first and then first name last so it's a little bit arbitrary, uh, but it's better than nothing, right? We're keeping track of this data because it's important, but <clears throat> this particular format for keeping track of data isn't necessarily great, right? So sometimes like a name will have last name first comma here, right? So it's not consistent, right? If it's not consistent, that makes it difficult to use, especially for a computer, right? We might want to use this data at some point to for example, generate emails to all of our customers, inviting them to a particular sale we might be having or something to that effect, right? So <clears throat> we need to do something to try to uh, add consistency to this data store, right? And when we're talking about databases, databases are essentially just ways to store data, right? Most databases uh, do store data in some sort of file structure when it's all said and done. So there's some sort of file on your disk that is all of the data in your database. There are some databases that works uh, exclusively in memory and they're memory databases and they're basically memory stores and so you never actually have a file that stores the data. The database is just completely temporary whenever the computer is on, right? But most databases when we talk about them there is some file structure that is stored on the hard drive uh, as you add or remove or manipulate or sort or change the data, right? So in this example this text file, customer.txt, it's just a plain text file, but this uh, is a form of database. It's just a file system database. Okay. So we'll close this and we're going to try to make a, a different version of this that's going to be more consistent and um, more consumable by a computer program. Right. Okay. So let's look at a different example. Uh, we're going to introduce a CSV file. Okay, so a CSV file is um, let's open this up. CSV stands for comma separated values. Okay, so this is the exact same information of our previous list. You see, it's much more concise. Uh, we save a whole lot of, of uh, room in storage. Uh, every single this is essentially a table. It's tabular data. Um, every row here is a record with the exception of the first row these are the labels for each of the items okay and then comma separated means each value of our data uh, one of these records all of the the data in this record is related to one customer right so all of these values are separated by commas so that tells me that this first value is the ID the second value is the last name so anything between the commas is considered a value and the exception the sole exception is this first line and this first line is also separated by commas but these values are actually the labels for these um, data fields in each record okay so you can see how this is kind of uh, reminiscent of tabular data this is a table of data we have rows and columns so this is the ID column every one of our uh, customers has a particular ID and that becomes important here because for example you have John Smith but then we have another customer named John Smith who's not the same customer right so it's important that we have some way to uniquely identify uh, each one of these customers when we're, when we're uh, talking about them 
Now, we could use a phone number to uniquely identify uh, a customer or an email because emails are unique and so are phone numbers. But that has its own set of problems because individuals commonly change phones and, and sometimes you can even change uh, email addresses or you can give your email addresses or phones to other people, that sort of thing. So usually that's not a really good unique identifier. So generally speaking, you'll have some sort of number in your database that's going to uniquely identify uh, each individual record. And so in this case, we're just gonna start numbering from zero and that will be good enough for us and it's nice and simple. All right, so you see this is, this is definitely much cleaner than the other view that we had uh, of the data and uh, it, this can be consumed by a computer program quite easily. Right? Each line is split over the commas, so the computer can understand if there's a comma, the thing before that is an item, and then to the next comma, that's an item, and then to the next comma, that's an item. So this is easily di digestible by a computer, which is really good. That allows us to do some interesting things, uh, like, for example, generating that email uh, that we might want to send out to all of our customers, inviting them to take part in a new sale we're having or something like that, or a thank you letter or any number of things. All right, so one of the downsides of this type of list is it becomes uh, difficult for human beings to start entering data like this, okay? Because if, if a human is allowed to enter data in this form, uh, they could still, you know, accidentally, let's say we had another um, John, it was a John Doe, they could accidentally switch around the first name and the last name, right? So I've placed John, which is the first name, I placed it in the last name uh, column, right? And then I placed Doe, which is the last name, I placed that in the first name column, right? But during the, the course of business, you know, things get, uh, you get distracted by different things, and you might do something like this, right? So JD. So I might enter in this information. We've got what I think is a, a first name, last name, but I've actually mixed those up. I've got a phone number and an email address, and I think I'm good. But I've also uh, added the wrong ID, right? Uh, I accidentally duplicated that ID, or I could even skip one on accident, right? Something like that. Skipping isn't nearly as bad as uh, duplicating. But there's a lot of problems now with humans trying to add things to this data, this data set. So we want to keep it clean so that our computer programs can utilize it well. So basically what we want to do is we want to uh, create a whole set of computer programming tools that will modify this data for us so that no human actually has to open this file and edit it. Okay, so let's delete this line because it's not right and let's explore a little computer program that we made to add uh, an entry or a record into our database. And again, this database is about as simple as it comes. It's a CSV file, and we're just storing individual lines of that file as records. All right, and we'll go ahead and, and, and compare that with uh, our original. And then I'm gonna open this one too. So here is our CSV file. Remember this one here was our original. And you see how messy that is and it's longer too, right? We're actually saving quite a bit of space um, because we're duplicating all of these, these names. I mean, sometimes we don't have them at all. Sometimes we do have them. When we do have them, sometimes it's full name versus first name, right? So there's a whole lot of extra characters and extra data for every single one of these records. Each one of these represents a customer, so it represents a record. Compare that to our CSV file. This is nice and clean. Each line is a record. Again, as I said, we still have that issue of this not being uh, great for a human to manage because they're prone to mistakes, right? Computers are really good at doing some of this stuff um, that can always increment one number very easily. So as long as we have a really good program, when we add records, this data should always be uh, in the correct format. All right, so I've made a little Python program here that essentially allows us to add a record to this database. All right, so 
you can look over this code if you like. We're going to kind of skip over that. Um, but for the most part, it opens up our CSV file. It reads in the data, and then <clears throat> it parses it out into a dictionary. And you also, this function gets the list of labels. All right, and then so for every single label in our list of labels, we output to the user, enter a value associated with this field, and that's the, the label of the field. So our labels are going to be these things, right? Now there is one distinction. We don't want to ask the user for the ID because the user will probably make a mistake. We're automatically going to generate that ID. So when I run this program, add.py, it's automatically going to do an 8 there, and then it'll add whatever I type in to the, um, to the data entry fields. It's going to add them to the appropriate place in our data set. I'll go ahead and save that. All right, and then so after it's collected all of this data, then we open our CSV file again and append the line, the CSV line, right? And we're joining all of those items we just collected with a comma, right? Comma separated value, and we write that out to the file. Okay, so this is less important, but the idea uh, shows you that we've, we're writing some sort of computer program that uh, collects the data that we need, the data entry, and it helps us to not make any mistakes when we're recording it down in our file, right? Uh, it helps us by getting the correct number of uh, the ID number, and also it puts all of the items in the correct location, and it keeps our data nice and formatted, nice and tight like that. All right, so let's run this and see what we get. All right, so I'm going to run this with Python 3, add.py, okay, and it's opened up my file. It's uh, read the top line of my CSV file, and it knows that the first one is the ID, so it skipped over that one, and now it's asking me for a last name. Okay, so I'm gonna enter in our John Doe data again. Uh, first name, John, phone number, And as you can see, I add these phone numbers in, in lots of different ways, right? And so there's an inconsistency even still in our database with these phone numbers, but that's something you can also correct. Um, it depends on how you collect the data. I could parse this and strip out, oops, I could strip out all of the different hyphens and just store this as a big number if I wanted to. But there's a number of different ways of dealing with that. But either way, this is a good start. So I'm going to save uh, the phone number. Uh, one, two, three, four. Let's see. Uh, five, five, five. Something like that. And then we might have JD dot example. Can't type. JD at example.com okay so this would be the person's email address and we press enter and the program has finished running we see we're back at the command prompt so we, we can validate that this added all of this information here let's go to our customer's CSV file and sure enough we have an item here ID of 8 last name first name so it didn't switch them up like we did right and then it added this phone number and then that email address just fine so what we've done is we've added computer, uh, a computer program, computer functionality that ensures the data that we're adding to this database is neat, it is organized, well constructed, right? And we could also add eventually validations to make sure all the phone numbers look the same way, right? Right now we have them different things like this, but that's not particularly important at this stage. Okay, so that's nice. So this is the concept of a database management system. The database management system has lots of different tools, uh, programmatic tooling around the data that you're actually storing. Fundamentally, almost every database has some sort of file that it winds up storing the data in, but the database management system consists of all the tools around that data um, that allow you to interact with it uh, while maintaining the, clean the cleanness and the clarity uh, of the data and um, making sure it 
it's stored properly and the database doesn't get corrupted, right? So these types of tools. Another thing that a uh, database management system does a lot of times is generate some sort of report on the data. So what good is data if you don't have some way of displaying it, right? If I'm in a business meeting, <clears throat> I could display this data like this, right? That's not very nice. You might want a nice graphical user interface, right? <clears throat> So this is a programmatic way to add data to our database, but there are other programmatic ways to do that. We can use a graphical user interface. All right? So uh, it turns out if you've ever used a spreadsheet, this uh, CSV file is essentially just a big table of data. So I can actually open this with some sort of uh, spreadsheet software like LibreOffice Calc or Microsoft Excel, something like that. And I'll open that with Excel here in a second. But I can open this up and it asks some different questions um, and you have to tell it what kind of separator we're using. This is uh, separated by a comma. It's a comma separated list. Um, we don't have tabs. Sometimes you'll separate items by tabs. In this case you can separate by multiples, right? Uh, either or, that sort of thing. And then we look down and we see you know what this looks like this is how it's going to import all this data right and all we do is click OK and we see we've opened a spreadsheet and all of our data is in here so this is just a kind of nicer format than our text file all right, if we go back to our text file um, when these get really, really long, when each row of data gets really, really long, you see the commas don't always line up, and I can't just look at this and know exactly where the email fields start. Right? So looking at it in a spreadsheet like this, everything is really organized uh, nicely. You, again, have your, your headings, and you have uh, rows and columns. Each, each row is um, equated with a customer. Right? It's one record of one customer. Right, so you can do this with any spreadsheet. So CSV files were one of the first concepts of a spreadsheet type system. Right? Now, today, the actual save, the way you save most spreadsheets isn't a CSV file. They're much, much more complex because you can save equations and do calculations and all sorts of other things. But it's good to know that the, the basic idea of a, of a comma separated values list uh, is essentially a spreadsheet. All right, so we'll, we can close that out. And I can go ahead and pull this over in, in Windows land too. This is a virtual machine. And we can, we have the same data over here. And we can open this up in ex, uh, Excel. All right. Okay. And we get all the same stuff. And we can move this and organize it a little bit but this is a nicer way of, of, of looking at the data and in this format you actually might be able to allow humans to adjust it and interact with it right it's a little bit more dangerous to allow the humans to interact with the pure text file they're more prone to mistakes this is a little simpler to read right so um, humans would probably be a little bit better at manipulating this data but they could still make a mistake they could still duplicate uh, an ID or something like that right <clears throat> but at least this is a better visual way of displaying things. So if you had a business meeting and you were going to talk about all of the new clients you had, right? This is, you know, better than for example, either of our previous two options. Uh, it's much better than this, right? Talking about that in a business meeting wouldn't be great. Oh, we have customers.csv. That is not good for a business, right? You wouldn't want to display this at some sort of business meeting. You're not going to make a good impression, right? Now this is nicer, but it's still cluttered, right? This is a tool it's for editing data. It's not really a, a tool for displaying data, right? So at some point you want to generate some sort of report on your data, right? What's the point of having data if you don't have some mechanism to display it or show something meaningful from it, right? So one thing you might want to do is generate an email to all of your clients, like I said, just to demonstrate um, you're having some sort of sale. Uh, another thing, you might have this business meeting and you just want to uh, show some of your, your top clients that you've recently, um, you know, recently became clients. 
Okay, so we can do this a couple of ways. I have a Python program. We're back here in Linux land. I'm using Ubuntu here. Uh, I have a program. It's a simple little Python program that basically generates a report based on my CSV data. So this generates a report. These two functions are the same as they were in the add program. Basically, you open the customer's uh, CSV file and then for each record we print out a little spacer and for each key in the record you get the value from the dictionary and then you print out the label essentially and then what value it is for the record alright so if I run this Python 3 um, report now this is a much nicer view of our data this is human human digestible right now, generally speaking, uh, using the terminal to display something for a board meeting would not necessarily be great. The terminal is great for computer computer coding, but this this looks better than our text files, any of our text files, right? So this is better uh, from a complete textual standpoint. But if we wanted to do a real report for a real business meeting, we'd want to have some colors and have some, you know, something more, uh, a little bit more fancy, uh, something nicer, something we could put on a PowerPoint. Uh, and you can do graphs and different things, have colors, that sort of stuff, right? So uh, this is, th this concept, again, this is more programmatic tooling around our data, all right? So a database management system has programmatic tooling that you can use to describe your data, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, go back into Windows land and use Microsoft Access, and we're going to create a database with the CSV file. And that database is going to allow us to have access to all of the Microsoft Access tooling around their database management system. All right, so Microsoft Access is designed to do exactly what we're talking about. And that way we don't have to write little programs like this surrounding all of our data. This has already been done. Database, database management systems have done all this for you, and you know they work. They're very well tested, so you don't have to do this yourself. Okay, so first things first, we're going to open up Access. And we'll have a blank database. And I'm going to put this in my data folder. And I'm just going to call this Customers. And the extension is going to be ACCDB, it stands for Access Database. good create alright so it starts me out with a new table and I can add items here if I wanted to and I could manually add all this data but I already have it in a file it would be nice if access would just let me import my file and create a, a table with it now it turns out that you can if I go to external data <clears throat> and I want to import something uh, new data source import and link new data source button uh, from file and we have a text file. The CSV file is really just a plain text file. The only thing that makes it a CSV file is that the way that the text is formatted inside of the file, but the, the file itself is just textual characters, right? So it's plain text. Alright, so find the source. That's going to be desktop data and that's our customers.csv file. And we're going to import the source data into a new table in the current database. All right, click OK. Oh, I've got it open in another file. I've got to open in this, so I got to close this. Uh, I'm not going to save. There we go. Now let's try this again. Data source from file, text file, browse, customer CSV. All right. All right, now just like when we open this with Excel, we're uh, presented with several questions about the data so it knows how to import this data into the database, all right? So uh, your data seems to be in a delimited format, right? It is delimited. We have commas delimiting each of the fields. So it intelligently figured that out. Um, you can also have data in a fixed width field. So every eight characters, there's supposed to be you know, some sort of textual value there, right? But ours is delimited instead. 
So we click next. Let delimiter separates your fields. This is comma separated. CSV. All right. Now this is interesting. The first row contains field names, right? See how it moved this up? These are going to be the names of our columns now. If I don't have that, it's assuming that these these are just uh, it's another row of data, right? It's not smart enough to figure that out automatically. So we have to select this and we tell it the first row of stuff is going to be the names of each one of our columns. All right. So we can say over here that looks good. Next. Okay, now for each one, we have to tell it what type of data that is. Okay, so this is going to be uh, integer. If I did a long integer, that would that would mean I could have more records, but each record would, would take up more data. So it's not that big of a deal, but since I know I'm only going to have eight, I'm just doing integer. If I had a real business, I might not. Um, so the field name, ID, it already knows that. Uh, indexed, uh, duplicates okay. Um, so duplicates are not okay. All right, because this is our ID, right? And <clears throat> the primary key this is talking about um, what is the thing you use to identify your uh, each record uniquely, right? In our case, see we have Smith and John, Smith and John. The thing that identifies them uniquely is this ID. That's the entire purpose of it. So Access, when you import something, Access can add a unique identifier for you, but I already have one, so I'm going to say choose my own primary key, and that's going to be the ID field. So Access knows now this is the thing that uniquely identifies these items. Next, and then the table name. I'm just going to call it customers and finish. Uh, I don't want to save the import steps. It doesn't really matter. All right, so table one was the one that was created initially for me, and I just I don't need that anymore, but I do have customers. So I'll double click on that and open that up. And here's all of the information uh, in our database. And it's been automatically uh, added for us from our CSV file. So that's kind of nice. Now, <clears throat> this isn't much better than the Excel spreadsheet. So what we need to do is we want to try to generate a report that's going to be a little bit nicer than that because we have a business meeting or something coming up. right? So what we're going to do is we're going to generate a report. All right, so <clears throat> up here under, let's see, where is it? Oh, create. We are going to generate a report. All right, so this just uh, prints out your data in a specific way. And the most, the easiest thing we're going to do is we're just going to print out all of our data in one report, and this will be a report on our new customers. But ideally, you could change this. You could select certain fields. If if you had new customers and they had purchased items, you this, you could select all the customers that purchased more than five hundred dollars worth of equipment, uh, and then have a report on that. You can have reports on all sorts of things. Uh, you get to decide what the port, uh, what the report. Um, means and, and what type of data goes into it. Okay, so we're just going to do the, the simplest one though. And by default, that's just basically, you know, creating a nice way of displaying everything that's in your database. Okay, so we'll straighten some of this out. that on there in the board meeting so we can remove some of this stuff there we go and then this page one kind of move it over here in the center actually we don't even need it okay so this is going to be basically what our nice report looks like what's the name of, of the report we could change that um, and we could change that to latest customers right 
we have the uh, date and time that the report was run, so we know exactly you know what this data reflects when it was in there, right? That sort of stuff. So you're going to add all sorts of things to these reports, uh, and they give you good information and good analytics on the data that you have in your database. And ideally, your database would be connected to your business, your any sort of interaction with your business. If you had an online business, your back-end system would interact with your database. So when you buy something on the web, there would be a record of it in your back-end on some sort of database. Access isn't normally considered the type of database that would do that, um, but there are lots of databases and they all generally do very similar things. All right, so uh, let's say we wanna uh, make a PDF file out of this report, because this looks nice. We're ready to submit it for our business meeting. So all we have to do is export this as a PDF. Alright, so, oops, we want to, well, first we want to save the report, there we go, okay, so over here on the left we have reports, right, and if I right click on that, I can go to export, and I want to export that as a PDF file, okay. And then I'm going to put that PDF file in my uh, desktop data folder with everything else. I'm going to click publish. And sure enough, here's the file that's created. It's a nice PDF file. And I can email this out to somebody and say, hey, these are our latest customers. Here's the date. It's a nice professional looking way of displaying your data. Okay, so that's the the very basics of data management systems and databases and why they're needed and a simple example about a, a new business starting up. Okay, so we can close out of here. We don't need that. And then just make sure you can save your save your reports and save your database and then you can exit out of there. Uh, do I want to save the changes to the layout? Yes. All right, and there we go. We see our actual database is just saved in a file, right? Just like our CSV file is just a file, but Access saves things a little bit more intelligently than a comma-separated list. For for numbers, it it saves them in a binary form to save data data space. Um, there's all sorts of things that Access and any database management system does to conserve space and to organize the data and make sure that it's free from errors. Okay, But inevitably it all ends up in a file on the file system. And this is our database and we could move it to another computer and open it in Access and it would be there. Okay, So that's the extent of the introduction to databases and database, database management systems.